will be a call from shaitan, a false call. And he will say that the Dajjal has taken your place amongst your families. That the Dajjal has appeared amongst your families. And what they will do, they will leave everything in that place that will, that will be in their hands and they will leave and they will come. But it will be of no avail. On that day, and when they reach Syria, he will come out. So in other words, that there will be an initial false rumor, a false call brought about by shaitan that Dajjal has appeared. So the Muslims who are victorious in Constantinople, they will leave whatever they're doing and they will approach uh, Syria and they will send a, 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 a party of scoutsmen, 10 scoutsmen. And while, when these scoutsmen reach Syria, it's then that Dajjal will actually emerge and he will, he will come out. No place of earth would be left, but he would tread it and overcome it, except for four mosques. The mosque of Mecca, mosque of Medina, At-Tur, the mountain of At-Tur, and the mosque in Jerusalem. And his time is 40 days, one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and the rest of the days will be like your days. And they said, the day which will be like a year, will, uh, like a year will one day's prayer suffice us in it? And he said, no, but you make, must make an estimate of the time, and then observe the prayer accordingly. And they asked, how quickly would he walk upon the earth? And he said, like a cloud driven by the wind. And then the messenger said, Ali Sallam, that verily three years before the appearance of the Dajjal, famine would prevail, and people would be confronted with great hunger. And Allah will command the heaven in the first year to hold back one third of its rain, and he would command the earth to hold back one third of its production. In the second year, he, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, would command the heaven to hold back two thirds of its rain, and would command the earth to hold back two thirds of its production in the third year. In the third year, Allah would command the heaven to hold back all of its rain, so not even a single drop will fall. And he would command the earth to, to hold back all of its production. So there will be no greenery, there will be no animal having any cloven hooves, and everything would, would, would perish except that Allah wills. And then the Sahaba said, how would the people, how would the people live in that time? And he said, by tahleel, by saying, la ilaha illallah, by saying takbir, Allahu Akbar, by saying tasbih, subhanallah, and by tahmeed, by saying alhamdulillah. And these, these words would be the replacement for food. So this Dajjal would not enter them from any of its ways, meaning the, the ways that lead to uh, Medina, except that he would be in, except that angels would encounter him with unshielded swords and there will not be any city but the fear of the dajjal would enter in it except for medina except for medina and there would be medina at that time will have seven gates and two angels would be at each of its gates repelling the fear of the dajjal from it and then this dajjal he will settle in a barren land in in a land which is called al juruf which is just behind the mountain of uhud and there he would pitch his tents. He would place his tents behind this mountain of Uhud in a place called al Jeruf. And at this time, Medina will rock three times. It will quake or shake three times with its people. And no male or female hypocrite would remain within Medina except that he would go out with it to, to, to the Dajjal. So by this, Medina will remove its impurity out of it just as a furnace removes the rust from the iron. Just the iron ore is purified from the, the impurities, then in a similar manner, Medina will be shook three times, and every monarchic, every male and female hypocrite will run towards the Dajjal. And this day will be called the day of purity and salvation. And the most of those who will go to the Dajjal will be women. Most of those who flock to him from Medina will be women. And then a man who is in his youth, in the prime of his youth, from amongst the believers would go towards the Dajjal. And this youth would be the best of the people. And the, 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 the armed men of the Dajjal would meet this youth and they would say to him, where do you intend to go? He would say, I intend to, to go to the one who is proceeding, who is coming forth. And they would say, don't you believe in our Lord? And he will say, there is nothing, he will say, there's nothing hidden about our Lord. And they would say, kill him, meaning kill this youth. And then some amongst them would say, has not your master, meaning has not Dajjal, forbidden you to kill anyone without his permission? So then they would take this youth to the Dajjal, and when the believer would see this Dajjal, he would say to him, O people, I bear witness that he is the Dajjal about whom Allah's messenger has mentioned, has mentioned in his hadith. 
and the Jal would then order about him. So he, the, he would order the people to make him lie upon his stomach. He would then catch hold of him. He would order the people to catch hold of him and make him to lie on his stomach. And then he would be struck whilst even on his back and on his stomach. And then the Dajjal would ask, don't you believe in me? And he would say that you are a false, you are a false Christ, you are the Dajjal. And the Dajjal would say, what do you think if I kill him and then raise him alive? Would you then be doubtful about the matter? And then the people around him would say, no. So then he would order for this youth to be torn into pieces with a saw from the parting of his, le- from the parting of his hair up to his legs. So we'll split him in half and he will kill him. And, uh, and in another narration of the hadith that occurs that the Dajjal will strike him with a sword, cut him into two pieces, and make these two pieces a large distance from each other. The distance between an archer when he fires his bow and where it lands, so that the same distance. And then he would then say to him, the Dajjal would walk between the two pieces, and he would then say to him, stand. And this man would stand upright, and he will, kneel, he will then call him, and the man will come forward laughing with his face gleaming. And then he would say to him, don't you believe in me now? And the man would then say, by Allah, this is only added to my yaqeen, my certainty concerning you, meaning that you are a Dajjal. And he would then say, O oh people, uh, so that the Dajjal would then try to grab hold of him and catch him so that he tried to kill him again. And then the man between his neck and his collarbone, it would be turned into copper, and the Dajjal wouldn't be able to find any way to kill this man. So he would catch hold of him by his hand and feet and throw him into the air. And the people will think as if this man has been thrown into hell. So people will think that the Dajjal has thrown this man into hell. Whereas in reality, this man would be thrown into paradise. And then Allah's Messenger said that this man, or this youth, or this man, he would be the most excellent and the most eminent amongst the people in regard to martyrdom in the eye of the Lord of the world. Then the angels will turn his face towards Syria. So now that the, the, the Dajjal will, will face towards Syria. He will come to a mountain of Jerusalem and he, w- he will hold a group of the Muslims under siege. And it's at this time that the believers will face a very, very hard and very severe affliction. So it will be a very, very trying and difficult time. The people will flee from the Dajjal to go into the mountains. And Umm Sharik, the daughter of Abu... Uh, the, the Umm Sharik, who is the daughter of Abu, Abu, Abu Al-Aqar, she said that where will the Arabs be on that day? And he, Ali Salaam, said that they will be few on that day. The Arabs would be few on number, in number on that day. And then from these people, a righteous person will be their imam. A righteous person will be their imam. Allah would make him fitting for the caliphate in a night. So that he would become a, a khalifa overnight. And his name will be like that of mine. And his father's name will be like that of my father's. And he will have a broad forehead and a prominent nose. And he will fill the earth with equity and justice as it was filled with oppression and tyranny and he will rule for seven years. And he then said, two groups of my ummah, Allah has protected them from the fire. A group who will fight against India and another group who will be with Isa ibn Maryam. May Allah, may, may, may peace be upon them. He then said, whoever amongst you finds him, meaning Isa salam, then convey my greetings to him. And when the imam, meaning the imam of the Muslims at that time, would come forward to lead the prayer in the morning prayer, Isa would descend upon them in the morning from the heaven. He would descend at the white minaret on the eastern side of Damascus, wearing two garments which are lightly dyed with saffron and placing his hands on the wings of two angels. When he lowers his head, there will fall beads of perspiration from his head, and when he raises it up, beads like pearls will scatter from it. Every non-believer who smells the odor of his body will die and his breath will reach as far as he is able to see. And there is no prophet between me and him, meaning there is no prophet between me and Isa alayhi salam. He will descend to the earth. When you see him, recognize him. He is a man of medium height. He will have reddish, fair, he will be reddish and fair. He will wear two light yellow garments, looking as if drops were falling from his head, though it, it will not be wet. He will fight the people for the cause of Islam. He will break the cross. He will kill the swine. He will abolish the jizya. And Allah will, ma- Allah will make to perish all of the religions except for Islam. And so he, Ali Salaam, said, How will you be when the son of Mary descends amongst you, you and your leader? And how, how, how will you be amongst your, your own people? How will you be, meaning how will you judge? How will you be? 
And Ibn Abi Zi'b said, uh, do you know with what he will lead you? He will lead you with the book of your Lord, the blessed, the highest, and the sunnah of your prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then when Isa descends, this imam who, who, who would be leading the people in the prayer, he would walk backward, walking backward, and Isa, so that Isa alayhi salam would, should come forward to lead the people. But Isa alayhi salam would place his hand between his shoulder and he would say, no, you have some, you have, uh, and he will say that, no, you have, you have some honor, you have some other people over you as an honor from Allah to this people. So meaning he would say, uh, go forward and lead the prayer so that Imam would lead them in the prayer as their Imam. Then at this time, the, the, the Dajjal will siege a group of the Muslims. And this group of Muslims, uh, they would say, they, you know, they, 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 they would say, what are you waiting for against this rebel? Accept a fight with him until you meet Allah or you will be given victory. So then they will be given consent. So then they will agree to go and fight the next morning. So when they will be preparing for the fight the next morning, they'll be arranging their rows, and the prayer will be established. Then uh, Isa Ali Islam will be with them, and he will lead them in the prayer. When he raises his head from the ruku, he would say, Allah, he is him who praises him. May Allah kill the Dajjal, and may the Muslim overcome, overcome them. And then when the prayer ends, he will say, open the door, and the door will be opened, and the Dajjal will be behind it. So this is where they meet the, the, the Dajjal. And 70,000 Jews will be accompanying him, Every man of them will be wearing, will be having a decorated sword, and he'll be wearing a green shawl. And Isa Ali Salam will then seek him, seek the Dajjal to kill him. So then Isa Ali Salam would march towards the Dajjal with his spear, and when the Dajjal would look at him, he would melt just as salt is dissolved in water. And if he leaves him, he will keep melting up until he will perish. But Allah will kill him with his own hand. He will show Isa the blood on his spear. He would find him near the Bab Al Lud. In the east, this is a place called Al-Ludd or Lidda, in the east. And Allah will destroy him near the Aqaba or Faik.